Hey YouTube! Today we're making a top from Japanese sewing books. From start to finish, step by step, we will figure out the instructions even though it's in another language. I'm going to use this book, Couturier Sewing Class. This one is translated into Korean. There's also a Chinese version. I'll add some links in the description for this book in case you're interested. The author is Yukari Nakano and is published by Nihon Vogue Sha in 2015. So it's a four years old book, but the clothing styles in this book are very clean, simple, and lasting. So let's do a quick flip through before we begin. I'm going to make this top. You find that under the description, there will be a page number of where the instructions are. We are on the instructions page. You see, there are two versions, a short and a long one. They share the same pattern pieces, so they are combined in this instructional page. So this area here will tell you what fabric to use, what length and width is needed. Um, they will also list out other materials that you need, like interfacing, zippers, elastic bands. You can try Google Translate, but they usually give very cryptic fortune cookie kind of translations, and it's not much of a use. This area here will tell you where the actual pattern pieces are. The pattern's number code, how many pieces you need to trace out, there will usually be an alphabet letter like A, B, C, D to show which pattern sheet it is on. Moving on to the sizing, you see that there are four sizes, S to double L. For tops, the first measurement is the bust area. This is the finished size of the project. So if your bust is 95, don't make size S or else it will turn into a bodysuit. You want it to be loose fitting so you can move around. The second measurement is the length of the top from the shoulders to the hem. In each book, there is also a size chart guide. But since the clothing are in a loose fitting style with a lot of ease of wear built into it, I suggest to figure your size by looking at the finished size of each individual project. If you're making a skirt or a pair of pants, the finished size will only tell you the length of the finished project. So to double check, you can measure the actual pattern in the pattern sheet and see if the true waist area is large enough to go past your hip area. Most skirts and pants projects in these books are done with an elastic band. So it needs to clear the hip area in order for you to wear it. Now that we know our size, we're going to hunt down the patterns. So pattern sheet C, our project is on page 24. 
is pattern number 14, two pieces. You see that the patterns are printed one over another. They're all in actual sizes. So I found the first piece, the front. Double check. And the second piece, the back. Now we have to figure out if seam allowances are included in the pattern, which is very easy. You just take a look at your pattern piece. You see the bold lines for the four sizes. And if there's a faint line inside, this thin line is the sewing line of size S. So that means the seam allowances are included. To check on the length of your seam allowances, you just measure from the thin line to the bold line of size S. So over here is one centimeter, but on the side here, maybe 1.5. To trace the patterns, I use brown paper for wrapping postal boxes. And this is just carbon paper taped together into a giant sheet. So you trace all the markings, the arrows, and we'll go over these markings a bit later. Sometimes I also use this tracing fabric. So the major advantage is that you can sew on them. So you can make a mock-up and fine-tune it before you make the actual project. And also storing them takes much less space than paper. There's a section all about markings in the book. So the arrow shows you how the pattern is aligned on the fabric. The dash lines means you place the, the pattern on the fold of the fabric. These straight lines are used for aligning two pieces of patterns together. And this one means you have to fold it to create a pleat. And the V-shaped one means you have to sew it up into a dart. For each project, they will show how to lay out the patterns onto the fabric. This is very handy if you are using similar directional prints as in the project. You can find additional pattern pieces on the layout diagram. So for my project, I need to cut out two more rectangles for the lower part of the top and also a bias binding piece. You remember that dashed lines means folded? So here this rectangle is cut on the fold of the fabric. Okay, let's do this. You see the arrow, it is going the same way as the salvage that is the finished length of the fabric. I folded the fabric over, so I just need to cut once to get two mirrored pieces, one for the left side and one for the right. If you have a cork top table, you can just stick pins right through them. I have a DIY on how to make this desktop. You can check it out here. You can also pin all three layers together. Just make sure that the bottom layer is not shifted. On this pattern, there's also a short line. You see that short line? When you cut the pattern, make a tiny snip to mark it. We will use this mark to line up the front and the back pieces of the armhole. Because this part here is the armhole. The pattern for the back piece have a dash line, so we will place that on the fold of the fabric. When we cut it out, we will get one full piece of the back. And don't forget to snip that short line. I'm cutting out the lower part of the top. I'm just following the measurements that is written on the layout part of the book. I do the bias binding differently. If you want to see how to make bias tape from a square, I also have a tutorial here. So this part here is a handy overview of all the steps. Usually number one is preparation of the pattern pieces. They will have detailed expanded steps for each number. So in step one, I have to interface the neckline to give it some structure. I'm just going to use my existing pattern to cut two pieces of interfacing. Now I'm going to cut it in half to get two pieces. The interfacing I'm using is a lightweight type. 
and the bumpy side is where the glue are on. So you place the bumpy side onto the fabric and press with an iron to melt the glue. If you want good results, you always iron your pattern pieces. I don't always do that, but that is the best practice. Now we've got all the pieces to make our top. These are the front two pieces with the neckline interfaced. We will zigzag all the areas that is um, on step one. So the back piece and these are the peplum part. We will zigzag on the sides and the bottom. And we also got our bias binding prepared. So one more thing, I forgot to mark where the neckline overlaps. So this is what I'm doing here. So step two is sewing the shoulders together. We're going to straight stitch them together with the front sides facing each other. After we sew up the shoulders, we will zigzag them over them and iron them down. The instructions will tell you which way to iron the seams down. Okay, next step is bias binding the neckline. I folded the interfacing back onto the front piece, then start pinning the bias binding around the neckline. After I sew them together, I make little snips around the neckline so that it will have room to expand. Now we're going to finish the neckline. I double folded the bias binding over to cover the seams, then flip the interface part over. Make sure to poke the corners out so that there is a nice pointed corner over there. Next, we will use the sewing machine to help us do the gathering stitches. I lower the tension wheel to zero and increase the stitch length to the longest one. We will stitch two lines on the seam allowances very near to the stitch line. The goal here is to sew loose crappy stitches, which will make the gathering part a lot easier. Here I'm marking the midpoint of the peplum piece. We will align that to the center of the front piece. Then we pull the top two threads and spread the gathers out to the, to the center. So when it's about the same length, we can start, we can tie a knot and just snip them off. And we repeat that on the other side. So now we're going to place these two pieces like so um, and pin them together. So both of them have the right sides facing each other and we're going to sew across and repeat those steps on the back side of the, of the top. Okay, um, that's the back side. I've also top stitched the gatherings down. Over here, we mash the armhole and sew down the sides. After we do that, we'll finish up the armhole. We're just gonna pin it down and sew it around it. In this area, we're gonna spread out the seams.
and so uh, and so a horizontal line under it. We just have to hem the top and it's done. So I hope this tutorial helped you in some way and thanks for watching.